In our last episode, we discovered that the Blood Eagles kidnapped Beckett's brother, Frankie. And we heard on a holotape at the lab that one of the Raider bosses, the Eye, had force-fed Frankie chems, possibly in an effort to get information about Beckett, to convert him and turn him into a Blood Eagle or even to kill him. But we have, as of yet, to find Frankie. Beckett's next plan is to assassinate the second leader of the Blood Eagles, the Eye. And so he sends us to a brand new Blood Eagles den, the Crimson Prospect, just north of Drop Site G3. When we arrive, we see that the Blood Eagles have created a brand new Raider City at one of the pre-war power pylons. Thankfully, this makes easy pickings. We can try to take him out from a distance. Would you believe it? I've been looking all over for you. Congratulations! Oh, really? You are a winner of the Great Appalachian Sweepstakes! I'm I kind of in the middle of something here! Prize winnings! Do you not understand the concept of personal space? As a monthly prize You're winning, in my bubble! Move outside! My bubble. Have a wonderful day. This prize bot just tracks me down at the most inopportune times. <sighs> Where were we? That's right, killing blood eagles. <laughs> they all decided to go hide. Racing forward, we can shotgun them to death. that Crimson Prospect is a sprawling raider camp built atop shipping containers. We find one pathway leading deeper, and as we head around the corner and go up some stairs, we find... The Eye. Well, our job is done. The Eye is dead. But now to explore the Crimson Prospect. Heading up a staircase, we can turn right into a blasted out bus. We find an already unlocked box safe here, and then a bridge leading to a shack built inside the pylon. Here we find more blood eagles. The shack opens up through a door to the south, and here we find a way forward leading up to the west. But first, let's finish exploring this shack. There's a platform to the east. We find a chem box under a table. Back inside, we find their kitchen. Lots of empty containers and empty bottles. A few spices and salt to loot. We find a recipe near to a cooler. And more minor scrap. Then we find a staircase leading to an upper shack to the north. We'll go up here for now. Peering through a window, we look across the way to find another Blood Eagle. This shack was their barracks. We find a metal box under a table, and near to a bunch of beds, we find Earl's toolbox, locked with a key. Hmm, where do we find this key? Near to this is Earl's terminal, and we don't have to hack it. Earl's log. Here we find three entries in the first, Floyd takes the best stuff again. Got back from the raid today, and what do you know? Comes time to divvy up the loot, and Floyd picks the choicest bits. Again? I had two of my guys haul back this big comfy chair, and this guy just marches right up acting all entitled. Says he wants something more comfortable to sit on while he's up in that tower all day. Imagine that, complaining about sitting around. Meanwhile, I've got back pain every night when I go to bed. In the next one, got my chair back. What a character. Today, this guy takes this nice soft footstool to go with his chair. Well, that chair ain't his. It's mine. And it's sitting next to my bed right now. Right where it belongs. Ooh, Raider intrigue. All about a comfy chair. I wonder if we'll ever find this chair. In the final one, Acid Jafragal stole my doggone chair. Okay, okay. Floyd stole my chair. Here we go again. Stay calm, Earl. Stay calm. Maintain composure. I'm gonna kill him! <laughs> we don't find a big comfy chair here, so it looks like Earl never got it back. But then, under Earl's pillow, we find Earl's key. And with it, we can unlock his toolbox. All right. Inside, we find Earl's note to Randy. To Randy from Raid Leader Earl... Floyd has got to go. 
The nerve of that guy. I brought that chair back and he still thinks he's entitled to it. I asked him nicely and I asked him not nicely. I'm done asking him. I'm thinking we invite him to come out for a raid and find his own chair. Let's see how he does when he's not sitting in his little tower while we watch him get mauled. It's your Floyd. Don't make me go looking for someone else for help. Are we clear? So Earl went to Randy for help to get his chair back from Floyd. I wonder what Randy said. In this room, we find an assault rifle on a table covered in empty beer bottles. There's a bobblehead on a ruined holotape player. And on a table with a stealth boy and shotgun shells, we find Randy's terminal. Oh, so Earl and Randy were bunkmates. Randy's log. We find three entries, one of which is just turret control. In the first, Earl wants my help. Earl says it's time to get Floyd out of the way. No need for two leaders around here, apparently. I guess it means one less person when the loot goes around. I'm supposed to help him lure Floyd out into a field and let him die to something out there. Only problem is what happens when this goes wrong and I'm shot dead for my part in his little plan. Good point, Randy. Good point. In the next one, guess I'm Floyd's errand boy too. Not for long. Turns out Floyd has a similar idea to Earl. I gotta say, they make some fine points and are starting to give me ideas. Who needs either of them? I'm thinking there might be a new boss in town. Now that turret control is routed to my console, this should be easy. Yeah, new bed, new chair, the spoils of war. I can taste it already. Oh, ho, ho. so Randy set his sights on raider boss position. From here, we can access the turret and deactivate it. That should make things easier. Well, Randy and Earl's shack here is a dead end, so heading back downstairs to the main level, we can move around the corner to the west and take the other staircase we saw up to another floating shack. Here, we can loot the dead of the people we sniped from afar, move over a wooden bridge, and into another shack. Here, we find an already unlocked box safe in the corner. Turning around, we find a mini nuke on a munitions and chem shelf next to some Radaway and Medex. These blood eagles have a subtler corpse sitting in a cage. We find another shelf with an ammo box and a stim pack lying on it. Then, rounding a final corner, we find another staircase leading up. Heading upstairs. Here's to be it. Turning left, we find an end of dungeon steamer trunk. Next to it is a short shelf. And on the bottom shelf, we find Floyd's key next to a fermentable nuka shine. Then turning right and walking to the northeastern corner, we find Floyd's chest. We can unlock the chest with Floyd's key. Inside, we find Floyd's note to Randy. To Randy from Watchmaster Floyd. Earl can fall off a cliff and he will. I'd like to see him sit around all day while I go out and have all the fun. We talked about this, and I get my fair share of the loot. It's my chair, and it's always going to be my chair. Get Earl to come talk to me up here and tell him I'm thinking about letting him have it. We're going to get him to walk over and inspect it. I'll do the talking. When his back is facing you, push him off the ledge. Now don't forget what's in it for you. What exactly was in it for Randy? Just getting in the good graces of Watchmaster Floyd. Next to the chest is Floyd's terminal. Here we find two entries. Earl brought back a nice chair today, just for me. Earl was whining and wouldn't stop yammering on after the raid today because I took his chair. That mangy mongrel has the nicest bed out of all of us. If I'm going to be sitting around all day while they go raiding, I'm going to be comfortable while I do it. And in the final one, goodbye, Earl. Well, well, I get back to my post tonight after dinner and my chair is gone. I guess it decided to get up and walk to Earl's room all on its own. I took back what was rightfully mine, and now it's time to claim his life, too. It's time to put an end to this tomfoolery. Randy would handle leading the raids better anyways. Well, goodness, now I really want to see this chair. What was the commotion all about? Oh, and then we see it. Over in the corner... A big, red, beautiful, cushy-looking chair surrounded by empties. The back of the chair is decorated with stop signs, caution signs, scrap metal, guns, swords, and a knife. And you know what? With the Blood Eagles dead, I think this is Oxhorn's chair. 
That's right. Forget you, Earl. And Floyd. And Randy. This is Oxhorn's throne now. And I look good in it. Well, when we're just about done, we can hop on down. We find an outhouse nearby. I think we'll go ahead and skip that. They had another guard post erected. Here we find that machine gun turret that we deactivated. And at the very top, we find an ammo box. In the ruins of a tipped over truck, we find a skill level one locked box safe with goodies inside and some shotgun shells on a table nearby. With that, we clear the Crimson Prospect and we kill the eye. Heading back to our camp, we can check in with Beckett. <laughs> there you are. Two down, one to go, eh? <laughs> we're on a damn roll. While you were dealing with the trash, I managed to get a hold of Ronnie. Now she's going to help us take down the Blood Eagles at their final stronghold, the Watoga Underground. Why are they holed up in Watoga Underground? Honestly, I don't know. But Ronnie said she'll fill us in on everything when we get there. Now if you're wondering what to bring, I'd bring everything you got. All right, this is the Claw's last stand. Now he isn't going down easy. We could use more than just Ronnie's help. Oh, she's bringing the whole gang. It's, uh... That's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> Can't wait. We should head out there right away. Oh, we will. Just let me ask one thing before we go. You know, I'm just, uh... I'm just a little worried about what's going to happen after we rescue Frankie and, and, and take down the claw. You know, my, my work here will be done, but... I mean, where, do, where does that leave us? That's if Frankie's still alive. Oh, come on now. I mean, you're normally pretty decent for a vault lizard, hmm? But sometimes you can be a real drag. How about a little more confidence in our team here, huh? What do you mean? Where does it leave us? Well, I'm just you know, worried that, uh, you know, when we're done here, you're gonna move on. You know, there might not be room at your camp for a washed up raider and his bar, you know? We can flirt and say, I didn't know you felt that deeply about me, Beckett. That's, uh, <laughs> well, um, that's not exactly what I meant. But, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, I mean, who knows what the future holds, hmm? Let's just see if we can get all this crazy shit done first, huh? You're welcome to stay at my camp for as long as you like. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's what I was hoping you'd say. You know, it's, uh... It's kind of funny. <laughs> In another life, you would have made a hell of a raider yourself. <laughs> Imagine that. All right, I'm gonna head out to Watoga Underground and get things set up with Ronnie. You meet us there. Let's do this. With that, we complete the quest Eye for an Eye, and in so doing, complete the overarching quest and Eagle Flies Free. Then we begin a new quest called Thicker Than Water. As a reward, Beckett gives us the Blood Eagle leather jacket and jeans. It has no stats, but it's a unique costume and it looks great. It's a leather jacket with studs on the shoulders and a Blood Eagle motif painted on the back and the arms. It also has paint, or possibly blood, spattered on the jeans. Now that we've spent some time getting to know this Blood Eagle Raider faction, we find a new dialogue option with Beckett to ask him about the Blood Eagles. Let's talk about the Blood Eagles, we can say. Ah, uh, the Blood Eagles, huh? Okay. Shoot. How did you fall in with the Blood Eagles? When I was with Edwin's gang, I, mean, I thought I was king shit. I was popular with the gang. I was rolling in caps. I was untouchable. Then, I got hooked on the chems. Psycho, buff out, jet. You name it, I probably used it. And at that point, I was a marked man. See, Blood Eagles were the ones seeding the gangs with the chems. That's how they recruit. And they get you hooked, and they pounce. Now, one morning, I woke up, mind totally obliterated. Flying Blood Eagle colors, and that was all it took. I was their property now. Why didn't you leave the Blood Eagles after they kidnapped you? Well, they keep you hooked on the chems, and the leadership knows exactly what to say to pull your strings. Make you do what they want. Now, the few people that kicked the habit or resisted the chems ended up dead, so even when you were lucid, you, know, you kept your damn mouth shut. 
Oh, being with the Blood Eagles so long was... I was just devastated. And they suckered me in with sweet dreams of having fun. So many of us were scammed. How do you think the Blood Eagles ended up the way they are? When the Blood Eagles started out, they were mostly a tattered group of con artists and criminals, but mm, something changed. Some nasty chem addicts joined up and took over the gang from within. I had some radical ideas. Crazy shit. You've seen the results. And out of all this, a few leaders appeared. The blood, the eye, and the claw. It all happened so fast. No one was able to stop them. And by the time I joined, I was so drugged up, I just went right along with it all. How did you finally snap out of it and leave the Blood Eagles? Well, I was using chem so heavily, uh, I think I must have built up some kind of immunity. Uh, the stuff just wasn't sending me flying anymore. After I snapped out of it, uh, I was able to look around and see what the hell was going on. And just how messed up the Eagles really were. I wanted to leave right away, but I knew they'd hunt me down. So I thought I'd be clever. Take out a few of them first, you know, scare them. Well, as you saw, that didn't scare them at all. Uh, they caught me. Threw me into Rollins. I mean, by all rights, I should be dead. That's enough for now. Sure, sure. What else can I help you with? Well, gotta hand it to Beckett. I can't say I know of many former raiders who decided to leave their gang for reasons of conscience. But it wasn't going to end well for Beckett. It's a good thing we came by when we did. Now, we need to meet Beckett at the Watoga Underground. It'll be good to actually go on a mission with the guy and to see him leave our camp for a change. This is the final mission in Beckett's huge questline, and it's a doozy, really requiring its own episode. So sadly, that means that for now, we're out of time. In my next video, I'll pick up right here where we leave off with the continuation and dramatic conclusion of Beckett's story. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already subscribed, but you feel like you're still missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other items as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my YouTube members and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.